Bueno, amigos, estamos en el stand de Factory Entertainment, que es uno de los distribuidores y creadores de figuras de colección mucho más eh, interesantes. Los han conocido en la San Diego Comic Con y en otros lados porque se han especializado en los peluches de Game of Thrones, en los, en los lobos de Game of Thrones, los huevos. Tienen una cantidad de, 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 de producto que es muy interesante. Y ahora estamos con Barry, que nos va a dar un tour por aquí. Hi, Barry. Hi, muchas gracias, Ricardo. <laughs> well, you, let's start the tour with Pause play. Hey, <laughs> it's, a, it's a small dog you can take home and put in the corner. So this one, this one's simple, guys. We love cosplay. We go to Comic Con every year and we see all the people dressed up and we, and we thought, you know what? Kids love cosplay. Adults love cosplay. Why can't dogs and cats love cosplay? So hence, pause play. Round of applause. Nah. So, you know, that, that's basically it. And here we have Bruce. And can anybody imagine? The idea is here, it's dogs and cats dressed as their favorite superheroes. So wonder who Bruce could be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wonder who Jack is. Um, and it's, it's a bit of fun. They're, they're six inch high, plush, cuddly characters. Um, dogs, cats, heroes, villains. Launching here. Next year we'll have more characters and people tell us what they like. The idea is they're just collectible, they're fun. But remember, they're, uh, they're dogs and cats. So when you take them home, you've got to look after them. We can't promise if they're house trained. The heroes are, but the bad guys will probably uh, eat your couch. Oh yeah, well there's great. Now, what, I have, what do we have here? Here we have Nerd Vault. So this is a, a collectible um, holder for your stuff, for your credit cards, for your coins, for your cash, for whatever you want to put in them. They have little openers at the top and you can just hang them on a backpack, you can take them to school, you can hang them on your jeans, or you can just stick them on and use them as a decorative item. Um, but they're a vault for your nerdy things, a stash to keep your secrets in. And this is what we call SWATs, so this is soft weapons and tactics. And the idea behind this is you have soft weapon toys that you can actually play with, and I'll just reach across you there. Um, the idea here is you take a soft weapon, and it's completely flexible, and it's completely safe, and you can hit me with that one, and it doesn't hurt. I can attest to you that it doesn't hurt, but the added bonus, when you, uh, when you push the little button on the side there, you get a little sound effect. And if you hear it, when you hit it, you get battle sounds. So I can, uh, I can take a and you can uh, you can beat the hell out of me. Honestly. Look, no yeah, it sounds great. <laughs> Wonder Woman's sword, we've got Batman's Batarang. Yep, you, you can finally play Quidditch for real. We've actually got the broomstick, we've got uh, the golden snitch over there, which you can't see. We've got the bludger bat, so for the first time ever. And there you go, Harley's mallet. And you can uh, go on. Yeah, you see, perfectly fine. And that one has sound in it too. They all have sound that you turn on and off at the bottom. Um, and probably the biggest seller was Harley's bat from, uh, from Suicide Squad. This is sticks. This is, uh, this is something that's a little bit specialist. I, uh, I use a cane and, and we found out that all canes are kind of boring. Canes look like this. You know, they're what your grandmother carries and it's not interesting and it's boring. And why can't nerds have a fun cane? So we're adding character heads to the top. You can switch them out. You can turn them around. And my, my favorite there is the, uh, is the Joker one with the brass head. You can, uh, you can just see him there. He looks like, a, looks like a piece of solid brass, but the idea behind that is, hey, if you need a cane, why can't you uh, get one of these and you can actually have a cool cane. We've got Game of Thrones items and some of our prop replica items. Um, Game of Thrones is a big one for us. Last year we released the, uh, the Joffrey crown as a prop replica. It's a one-to-one -one scale prop replica of the crown that appears in the film. That has now sold out, so we're going ahead and coming with the next crown, which is King Robert. We have a bottle opener there, which is in the, uh, it's the shape, it's a replica of the hand of the king pin that they show, wear in the show, but we've added a bottle opener function because, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you have to live in that universe, you probably need a drink or two. There's plush items here. These are amazingly popular, cute, cuddly puppies from the show, the Dire Wolves, and this year we're going to go ahead and refresh the line, and instead of standing up, they're lying down. Baby dragons, eggs. Maybe prop prop replicas, yeah, yeah. We all used to work for Master Replicas, so we uh, we have a history of prop replicas in our blood. We love them, and uh, we continue to make them. Here's our Marvel range. These are metal miniatures. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to go back to the toy soldiers of old, the ones that used to be made of lead, and they were handmade, and they were popular in the 50s and 60s. And we said, why not, you know, bring them back for the modern age? And and these things are an artisanal thing. They're handmade. That they're they're made with liquid metal that's poured into a mold and every time you pour one into the mold it breaks the mold a tiny little bit and so we can only make about a thousand to fifteen hundred of these before the mold is destroyed it destroys itself so these are really really limited and some of these we're only making 500 pieces of um, so these are something that you know you keep as an artifact you when I was a kid we used to get bought toy soldiers and we go yeah they're great and then you'd be like you can't play with them they're, they're to keep um, and that's what that's what this is um, and you know it's it's for a discerning collector and hey it helps if you haven't got any room because some of these big statues 
you put a few of those out and you fill up your cabinets real quick. <laughs> these are our motion statues. These are our resin statues that all have an element of movement in them in some way. Um, they either quiver or they shake. And then we come down to the next shelf and there's some new developments for this year. We're, we're taking it to the next level with that piece. That's Cap and Iron Man fighting as they did in Civil War. And Iron Man is actually levitating over there on his balance. And there's Hawkeye and he is actually right there. Ant-Man is on the end of that arrow, a tiny little, about the size of a grain of rice. Um, and that product will come on that rotating turntable like that. The, uh, the electronic turntable is something we're going to try and add into more statues. Um, because, hey, it's really pleasing to watch the stuff moving. There's our Alex Ross monolith piece that's based on the famous Alex Ross artwork reimagined as a statue. How would it look if it was if it was real and in 3D? And there's a couple more of the metal miniatures there. There's DC, so a DC version of the same sort of Alex Ross style. Uh, that was the original seven, the painting. A couple of motion statues on the bottom there. There are the older items from previous years. And we come across to the top and we've got, what we're doing here is this is Wonder Woman from the new movie and we're trying to create, we call this neoclassical, this is what would Wonder Woman look like if she was a real god or a real goddess made in the Roman times or the Greek times. The resin has marble dust inside it so that it feels like marble and it looks like marble and all that veining you see there, every piece will be slightly different because that won't be a pattern, that, that's a random shape that just appears in the material and the idea behind this is you put this in your house and it's not immediately clear that it's a collectible. It might just be a statue, it might be a piece of art. Not for everybody, and we want people to let us know what they think. You know, do they like this kind of thing? It's different, and we, we like to do different things, and we want people to tell us, hey, I love it, or hey, I hate it, because we, we, we value the feedback. It's DC Metal Miniatures taking the same as Marvel and, and doing it for the DC Universe. And then on the bottom there, one of our little starring pieces, that's the Batcave in its glory from the 66 TV series. Some people would say that's the most elaborate display stand for a Hot Wheels die cast, because that's what that is. That's the Hot Wheels Batmobile right there. Um, but there's never been an accurate replica of the Batcave. And there's lights in there, the turntable moves, you've got the, the, the um, bat poles, everything, everything's there. You've got the little door that comes out and opens out. Um, and Even the, the outside of the Batcave. Yeah, we tried to, we tried to create a replica of what, you know, in real life there wasn't one set, there were various sets and various pieces and they moved it around. But we're trying to create a replica that people can keep in their house. Here's our Amakomi girls and DC characters, we're adding new ones in for this year. They're all motion statues, they all move in some way. Um, and you'll see some new faces there and some old ones, we're including some of the video game characters. Here we have our line of just various TV and movie stuff, Ghostbusters, Jurassic Park, um, there's a couple of new items for this year, we're bringing out more horror characters, so down on the, uh, on the middle shelves there we've got uh, Freddy Krueger that we're doing in large scale, and he has removable limbs and removable head and you can switch him around, and he has sound, and he moves, he's got um, articulation at the waist and as you poke him he'll shake around like he's about to uh, attack you. And he's, uh, He's the first in the line. We're going to follow him up with Jason from Friday the 13th and Pennywise the Clown. And anybody tells us, you know, who else do they want to see and we'll, we'll make it. I, I can see these are rings? Yeah, these are Ghostbusters rings. We, uh, we've got three different rings there. There's a No Ghost logo, there's a spinner ring, so you rotate the middle and it says, I ain't afraid of no ghost. And then on the very end is a Terror Dog head, a brass ring that's it's molded off of the, uh, the digital files from the movie. Wow, wow, wow. Well, most of these uh, things are already available on the yes, website. Most of the things are available on the website. It's www.factoryent.com and we ship all over the world to most places. Uh, and if we don't ship to your country, contact us because some of the South American countries, we have to have, um, we have, to have import information in advance, but we do ship to most places. Well, it's been a pleasure, uh, pleasure having too. this, Thank you guys. Thank this you turn around. Um, so you got to tell me, it. what's the Spanish for geek? Geek. Geek. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one I can learn. That's pretty cool. Nosotros seguimos aquí en Toy Fair. Estos juegos juguetes y coleccionables.